Hi everybody, this is Marisa. I just quickly wanted to chat to you about the new coronavirus and how we as Christians should respond. So I didn't know about this really to the extent how severe it was. Um, I'm not really into the news. I don't really follow everything. Tony normally um, tells me whatever I should know what's happening in the world. But this morning I opened my phone and there was this video clip of two reporters Americans and they were in China and they were reporting on the coronavirus and it was so wow in your face you know all the facts of how people are busy dying and how quickly it's busy spreading and how it's already been how it's already spread spread to other countries the fact that they're already building like a big thousand bed hospital that uh, within six weeks it has to be finished so it's really been like um, a lot of information and how you should treat the disease and that you should be on the lookout and whatever and it was just a very eye-opening um, video clip because I didn't know that it was actually so severe you know normally when you hear of viruses in other countries and you know that it doesn't affect you it's like something that just washes past your ears and you don't really pay attention but this actually made me sit up in my spirit I was just like for a moment grabbed by the severity of what this could pose because they don't have any vaccine they don't know how to cure it and until they have a vaccine people are just going to keep on dying so this morning i'm on this health group and people post recipes and how to um help your immune system and stuff like that and suddenly there was this whole thread about how you should treat viruses and the 10 steps of getting healthy and support your immune system against the coronavirus um, take a lot of vitamin C that's going to help you with the coronavirus and it was just post upon post about how to now up your system to fight the effect of the coronavirus and one lady even commented and said well God knew about this virus and surely he will put us in the right um, connection with people that will be able to help us and doctors so that we can you know that we can deal with whatever comes our way so that was a little bit I was like okay so God knew about it and he's going to now give us doctors and we're going to get a cure and we shouldn't be afraid and I just felt that was like I was wondering how are Christians responding to this news and how should we respond because I think it's so easy for us to just get swiped up with the fear I mean if we should hear that uh, cases in South Africa or with every country you are in and suddenly there's more cases how are we going to respond if there's really an outbreak of this virus within the parameters of your city or your wherever you live and um, it was so interesting I've got this other friend and she actually studied theology with me and she went out on the street sometimes we uh, like two years ago we would go out and we would pray for the sick so she's very new covenant she's radical she still goes out on the streets and they still pray for people that sick you know so very evangelistic very on fire for God and I saw a post that she posted and it was in Chinese and I said well the link isn't working just help me a bit and she came back and explained and then she made this comment she said um just don't go to the china mall and i was a little bit like okay so this is very new covenant person and i know it was just a slip in that moment but we should be very assertive and we should know exactly why we believe what we believe in the face of things like this you cannot be like now are we covered by the blood of jesus or maybe well we are covered but just be careful don't go into places where you can maybe contract that virus because if you are going that route it's actually fear keeping you away because God says a few things about sickness in the Bible in the Word of God and we must choose whether we believe what the Bible says or we should not call ourselves Christians so I know it sounds extremely radical to say well you shouldn't be fearful well the, that is what the Bible is all about it says all the time do not be afraid okay so 
listen to this scripture. I just quickly want to read this to you. So in, in Psalms 91, verse 3 and 4, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. Okay? So he will deliver you from the perilous pestilence. Pestilence, that to me is a virus. That's the way they spoke in the Bible. Okay, so God says he will deliver you. Even a thousand fall on your right hand side and a thousand on your left hand side and everybody is dying in your um, town. God says he will protect you. Listen to this. Psalm 112 verse 7 says, okay, he's talking about us. So I'm going to say, instead of he, I'm going to say uh, we. We shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Our heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. This is a very evil tiding, I must say. If I wasn't a Christian or I didn't believe in the ability of Jesus to keep us safe and to keep us under his wings and to keep us from sickness, I would be very afraid. But this scripture says specifically, do not be afraid of evil tidings. This is a very evil tiding. And we've got now a choice of how we are going to respond. So, I know my friend was in that moment just caught up, you know, into the whole sensation of, wow, you know what, just keep away from the China Mall. But I... I also know that this is something that we need to take a firm stand on. You cannot be wishy-washy, am I now afraid or am I not afraid? So here is an example of John G. Lake. In the early 1900s, he came over as a missionary from America and he came to South Africa and they had an outbreak of a virus that were killing the people by the dozens. In fact, people would die in their houses and nobody would take them away. They would lie in their beds, they would die, and nobody wanted to touch them because they didn't want to contract that virus. And what he, he and his friend went into the houses without any mask or gloves or any protective gear, took out those people from out of the houses and they went and they buried those people because you can just imagine the stench of people dying but nobody is taking them and burying them. And I'm going to read it to you because I want to hear this account in his own words just to give you another approach of how very steadfast we have to be when these things happen. To not waver in our faith, but to know exactly who we are in Christ Jesus and that nothing that comes our way from the evil, from Satan, because he's the creator of disease. He wants to kill, steal and destroy. That is his mission on earth. But we can be protected. But remember, you can only be protected as far as your faith will carry you. If you do not believe that you are covered by the blood of Jesus, I promise you, you can read it in the Bible, you can preach it here, but if you've got a, another confession and saying, no, don't go there, you're going to contract that. Unfortunately, then you have a double confession. Before I read that account, let me quickly you read this. For you just to understand, you need to understand you can only have one confession. In Hebrews 10, 23, it says, Let us hold fast our confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful what did he promise he will keep us from sickness jesus says by his stripes we are healed so we can walk with that confidence so we should have one confession you have to choose what your confession is i am healed by the stripes of Jesus, what he did on the cross, I can walk without fear, knowing I will not contract any disease, or, well, two confessions. I believe here, but the other way, I'm, I'm not going anywhere because maybe, you know, I can contract that. Now, I want to read you this account of radical faith, and you have to understand, because this is an example of how it should be. I want to share this with you. When bubonic plague germs were placed in the palm of John G. Lake's hands, it was observed under a microscope how the germs died. 
Now this is John G. Lake's personal account of the situation and what happened. This is his story in his own words. And because we were in contact with the spirit of life, I and a little Dutch fellow with me went out and buried many of the people who had died from the bubonic plague. We went into the homes and carried them out, dug the graves and put them in. Sometimes we would put three or four in one grave. We never took the disease. Why? Because of the knowledge that the law of life in Christ Jesus protects us. That law was working. Because of the fact that a man, by that action of his will, puts himself purposely in contact with God, faith takes possession of his heart and the condition of his nature is changed. Instead of being fearful, he is full of faith. Instead of being absorbent and drawing everything to himself, his spirit repels sickness and disease. The Spirit of Christ Jesus flows through the whole being and emanates through the hands, the hearts, and from every pore of the body. During that great plague that I mentioned, they sent a government ship with supplies and corps of doctors. One of the doctors sent for me and said, What have you been using to protect yourself? Our corpse has this preventative and that which we use as protection. But we concluded that if a man could stay on the ground as you have and keep ministering to the sick and burying the dead, you must have a secret. What is it? I answered, Brother, that is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. I believe that just as long as I keep my soul in contact with the living God so that His Spirit is flowing into my soul and body that no germ will ever attach itself to me for the Spirit of God will kill it. He asked, Don't you think that you had better use our preventatives? I replied, No. But doctor, I think that you would like to experiment with me. If you will go over to one of these dead people and take the foam that comes out of their lungs after death, then put it under the microscope, you will see masses of living germs. You will find that they are alive until a reasonable time after a man is dead. You can fill my hand with them and I will keep it under the microscope and instead of these germs remaining alive, they will die instantly. They tried it and found it was true. They questioned, what is that? I replied, that is the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ. When a man's spirit and a man's body are filled with the blessed presence of God, it oozes out of the pores of your flesh and kills the germs. John G. Lake, the bubonic plague in South Africa in the year 1908. So you might ask me, but what does he mean with the spirit of God in me? Listen to these scriptures that's in the Bible. In 1 John 4.13, it says, And God has given us His Spirit as proof that we live in Him and He in us. Spirit of God in us. John 15 verse 4, Abide in me and I in you. God in us. Galatians 2.20, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ Jesus lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God. So, do you understand where I'm coming from? That if God is in you and His Spirit is in you and you can take this story and apply it to your life and understand that the power of God in you, the power of life, it's actually oozing out of your pores and it is repelling any sickness. And that applies to any sickness. I don't even care what you've been diagnosed with. If God says that you are healed through the stripes of Jesus Christ, the problem is we want to take the word of God, which is truth, and we want to take the facts of social media, the news, whatever bad, evil tidings comes our way. And then we want to try and mix it up and try and justify things. I'm saying, whatever symptoms, whatever things happen to you, 
if you stand in faith and you proclaim it and you do not have two confessions, but this confession that Christ in me, I overcome through the blood of the Lamb. So I do not fear. I am not afraid of any sickness. No genetical sickness from my parents can come and sit on me because the confession of my mouth, that is what I will experience in my life. So I just want to conclude and say, my confession is, I told my children just now this of how we can be excited because we are not under the law of the flesh, of the, the world, of what's happening there. But I think our purpose is to pray, really come in agreement and say, Lord, have mercy. Because there are so many people dying at the moment that's not safe, that do not believe in Jesus, that do not know of the life the fearless life that he has given us and we should now pray that God will just come and intervene into those situations and that he will just come and bring the truth and the light that will set people free so this is just me I just wanted to quickly um, just touch base with you and say I really had such a burden on my heart to share this with you because of the fact that we can really be swept up with the frenzy of fear and that is not what God wants for us. He wants to, us to live in freedom, be free and not fearful of sickness or anything because we have been saved and we have been set free by the blood of the Lamb. Have a lovely, blessed day and I'll chat to you soon.